الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said describing Muslims who would come generations later after the Sahaba who would be faced with the daunting task of practicing Islam with very little help. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَإِنَّ مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ أَيَّامَ الصَّبَرِ أَيَّامَ الصَّبَرِ فِيهِنَّ مِثْلُ الْقَابِضِ الْقَابِضِ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ لِلْعَامِلْ فِيهِنَّ مِثْلُ أَجْرَ خَمْسِينَ رَجُلٍ يَعْمَلُونَ مِثْلَ عَمَلِكُمْ فَقِيلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَجْرُ خَمْسِينَ مِنَّا أَوْ مِنْهُمْ فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بل أجر خمسين منكم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that after you or beyond you there are going to be days that require much patience. A person holding on to his dean will be like a person trying to hold hot coal in his hand. And the people who do deeds, good deeds during that time. They will have the reward of 50 men from amongst you. So one of the Sahaba said, O oh, oh, Messenger of Allah, do you mean 50 men from amongst them or 50 men from amongst us? He said, no, 50 men from amongst you. This doesn't mean that any one of us can be any better than the Sahaba. That's not to be understood from the hadith. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, La tasubu ashabi. Don't insult my companions. He said, Lo anna ahadukum amfaka mithla uhdin dahaban ma belaga mudda ahadihim wala nasif. That if one of you was to spend the whole mountain of uhud in gold as a charity, it wouldn't amount to a handful of what the Sahaba gave, not even half of a handful. So we are not even to be compared in that category with the Sahaba. But as the scholars who explain the hadith, they mean that the Sahaba, what it means is that the Sahaba, they had someone to help them practice their religion. They practiced Islam alongside of the Prophet Sallallahu Many of ayats were revealed about some of the companions along with the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet was there always for them to go back to. There was a level of security that they had. And they always had someone there to correct them when they were wrong. They always had someone to go back to, you know, they always had someone who was there to, you know, quell whatever insecurities that they had about Jannah, about Paradise. They always had someone there to, you know, keep them within the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many narrations, many hadith. One companion who thought that because his voice was loud in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he was going to the hellfire. Because Allah revealed the verse, don't raise your voice. Don't raise your voice over the voice of the Prophet. At least you render your deeds null and void while you realize it not. So he said, I raise my voice over your voice, so I'm from the people of the hellfire. The Prophet said, no, you don't do it on purpose. And you're not from the people of the hellfire. Rather, you're from the people of paradise. The Prophet mentioned about 70,000 of his ummah who will enter into paradise without any punishment, without any reckoning. So one of the Sahaba said, O Messenger of Allah, make dua that Allah make me from them. The Prophet said, you are from them. Another man stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, make dua that Allah make me from them. He said, Sabaqaka Ukasha, Ukasha beat you to it. He was always there to help quell whatever insecurities that they, that they had. The, the black woman who used to clean the masjid, she said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I, 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 I have epileptic seizures, and when I fall down, you know, make dua that Allah remove it from me. The Prophet ﷺ said, In, 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 in shitti da'autu wa in sabarti falaki jannah, that if you want, I'll make dua for you that Allah remove it. And if you're patient, then for you is paradise. She said, I'll be patient. Just make dua that when I fall down and I'm having my episode or seizure, that my garment doesn't expose my awrah. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, 
He said to Ikrimah, or he said to Atta, shall I not show you a woman from the woman of paradise walking from amongst us right now? And he pointed to the black woman who used to clean the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ was always there to quell whatever insecurities they, they, that they had. He was there to walk with them. When they were traveling and something happened, they would always come back and the Prophet ﷺ would always be there to correct them. When Mu'adh anhu was sent to Yemen, and he saw that the Jews and Christians were prostrating to their monks and their high priests. He came back and he prostrated to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you're better than them. And if there's anyone who deserves to be prostrated to, it's you. And he prostrated to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Mu'adh ma'adha, inna sujood lillah. What are you doing? Sujood is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Walau anna Allah ya'muru ahadan an yasjudu li ahad la amaratil mar'ah. And yes, to the Zojiha, that if I was going to command anyone to prostrate to anyone, I would, I would command a woman to prostrate to her husband. But sujood is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was always there to correct whatever misconceptions they had. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, They took their priests and their monks and their high priests as gods other than Allah. Adi ibn Hatim, who used to be a Christian who converted to Islam, said, O Messenger of Allah, we didn't used to worship them. The Prophet said, didn't they make halal what Allah made haram? And they made haram what Allah made halal, and you followed them in that? He said, yes. He said, then that was your worship of them. He was always there to correct them. He was always there to quell whatever insecurities they had. While today we have no one. We have no one. Just us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Us, our desires, shaitan, the kuffar, all of these different obstacles, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet wasallam, he said that they will have the reward of 50 men from amongst you. That an al lil amil fihim ajr khamsin rajulin minkum. That anyone doing good deeds during those last times, those last days, those difficult times, similar to the times that we are living in right now, they will have the reward of 50 men from amongst you because you had a comfort zone. The Sahaba had a comfort zone because they had the Prophet Sallallahu around them. We have no one. We have no one just left to ourselves to fend for ourselves. And as a result of that, the inkling, any inkling of khair, any inkling of good that we do during these times, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will reward, will reward us and, and it will be multiplied so many times over. And so, subhanAllah, in these times, in these difficult times, we make things so difficult on one another. Not realizing that the, the odds that are against us. Not realizing that the chips are stacked against us. And we still continue to make things difficult for us. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us, even multiply our reward many times over for the smallest little good that we do during this time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our condition while we fail to see our condition. And in ending, there are two du'as, two supplications that were made in the Qur'an. One by Ibrahim and his people, and one by Musa and his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the du'a of Ibrahim, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Oh Allah, do not make us a trial or a fitna for those who have no faith. And the du'a of Musa and his people, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Oh Allah, do not make us a fitna, a trial for people who are oppressive. And the scholars, that means, O oh Allah, do not give them authority over us. People who have no faith, do not give them authority over us so that they believe that they are upon the haqq. O oh Allah, do not give the oppressor authority over us so that they believe that they are in the right, that they are, that they are right. And this is a dua that we should make during this time so that we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not put us in a situation where we become a fitna for those who have no faith or a fitna for those who are oppressive. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته